All right, welcome again and thank you for joining us today. Just before we begin our class, we want to take a few moments to make sure everybody has a safe experience. First, we acknowledge that everyone has different abilities and comfort levels, so please feel free to adapt movements so that this class will work for you. This is an all levels class, which means that our instructor is going to provide you with some options as we go. But anytime you feel like you need a break, go ahead and take some downtime. This is your first time doing a kickboxing style class or doing an online fitness class. Please take it easy to start and remember to consider any injuries and any pre existing conditions you may have. Second, please take a moment to make sure you have a safe setup. We're probably going to need about two square meters to do this class. Uh, make sure to consider any of the other people or furry friends that may come into and out of your space during the class. I don't think we're going to play any music today, right, Justin? No. So folks, you can play your music at home if you like. And finally, please remember that there are inherent risks involved in any type of physical activity. Remember to work at an intensity appropriate for your fitness level. And finally, when you join, you will have heard an alert that said that this meeting is being recorded. That's just the instructor's screen that we're recording, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you can chat with me in the chat function throughout the class, and I'll provide any feedback that you have to Justin. And then at the end of class, we're going to open up the chat so that you can provide your feedback to the instructor directly. And that's it for me. Have fun, everybody, and I'll pass it over to Justin. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. So as, as he said, um, it, chatting during the class is going to be difficult for me to see, but if you do have questions on techniques as we go through, um, I recommend that you keep them in mind, that you, you put them in the chat window to Chris, and then we can go over those and hopefully nip any, any problems in the bud that you might have or any questions that you have on the technique. I'll try to demonstrate things continually so that you can follow along with me. And I'll also present a few different cues uh, that you can think about as you do the techniques. And just as Chris mentioned, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get a sense of where everyone's at individually. So if you want to push things harder, you can go faster, you can take less breaks in between things. Um, but if you find you're getting gassed out or, or it's being a little too taxing, just slow it down. Do the technique properly, but do it a little slower. Take a break in between each set. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a good time that way. So we'll all hop up here. Hopefully if you guys want music, you can get that going now. We're just going to do a quick warm up. So if you've taken a class with me before, that's great. There's going to be a lot of similar stuff. I always say you always need to drill basics anyway. Um, so we're going to go through that. Now, I've been given four classes. So if you do return um, bi-weekly every other week, we'll have some progression and we'll work through, through some other things. Uh, and then in the off weeks, there's another instructor, Gosha, and you should, uh, you should definitely check out his classes as well. He'll be doing a lot of similar stuff, albeit from his own particular style, both in teaching and fighting, and it'd be a great thing to check out. So we're going to adopt our fighting stance. If you imagine a box in front of you, you're going to step your left foot to the top corner and your right foot at the rear corner. They're diagonal from each other. If you happen to be left-handed, just reverse that. So we want our weight to be centered right between our feet. We're going to be on the balls of our feet, and we're just going to bob back and forth. I want your rear hand, your right hand, if you're right-handed, or your left, if you're a southpaw. You're gonna hold that up at your face, elbows tucked, and your left hand is gonna be a little bit forward. So let's find this stance, just back and forth. In between each of these exercises, we always wanna to return to our fighting stance. To start, we're just gonna do some high knees. Get those knees up as high as you can. We'll do this for about a minute, get the blood flowing, and get warmed up for our class. Remember to breathe. Breathing's good. Muscles love oxygen. Almost there. Keep it up. And back to our fighting stance. Bob. We're going to kick at our butt, so kick your heels back. Same thing on the spot. Getting that blood flowing. Yeah, good. Back to our fighting stance. 
what we're going to do now is I'm going to call down. And when I do, I want you to sprawl. So what a sprawl is going to look like is you're going to get your hips as low to the ground as you can, like this, and then spring back up as quick as you can. So again, from a different angle, your hips are going low to the ground and back up. It's going to look something like this. Down. Down. Nice work. Down. 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 Turn to our fighting stance. Nice work, guys. We're going to do a few knees. So going over the technique, what you're going to want is to place your hand, overlap on one another. Don't intertwine your fingers. You're going to imagine this on the back of your opponent's head, and you're going to pull that down to your hip. As you do so, raise your knee, and I want you to push your hips forward. I don't just want your knee to come up, but spear your hips forward as you pull. We'll do 10 of these. I'll rotate through so you can see the technique. One, two, three. Remember to spear those hips forward as much as you can. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not wanting to have any imbalances. We'll do the same thing on the other leg. So same thing, your hands are overlapped, not intertwined. You're gonna to pull to the opposite hip, the left hip this time. Bring that knee up and spear forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you guys don't have to rotate as you do that. You can do it straight at your screen. I'm just doing that so hopefully you get a view throughout the motion so that you can emulate it as best you can. Okay, so those knees are great, but we don't just want to hit our opponent once. We want to hit them twice. So we're going to do doubles. It's the same motion. You're going to pull that knee up and knee them. But what's the trick here is the footwork. So as this foot comes back, there's two steps. One, two. I'm putting my weight back, getting my weight back onto this foot. So knee, one, two, I'm now ready, knee again. So we'll do five doubles and it'll look like this. One, two, step, step. So knee, step, step, knee. Knee, step, step, knee. Let's do five. One, two, three, four, and five. Nice work. Almost there. We're almost, almost done. Again, don't want imbalances. Let's do the other side. Same thing. You're going to knee, step, step, back in position, second knee. One. Two, three, four, and five. Step, step. Good. We'll get up every one minute. Grab your breath. If you have a drink of water handy, take a drink. If you don't have one handy, go and grab one. Just have it around. I'll grab one myself. So hopefully we're feeling nice and warmed up. Again, just to reiterate, you can go at your own pace, find what works for you. But let's just try and loosen things up. So we're gonna start with the neck. We're gonna look side to side. Just slowly, not forcing anything. We're gonna move our ear to shoulder. Same thing, not forcing anything, just loosening up those muscles. And we'll do some rolls. So roll down. When you get to a shoulder, go straight across to the other. 
Don't crane your neck back, straight across, down, over. Nice, and roll the other way. Nice. Okay, we'll do our shoulders. So just rotating them forward, shrugging those shoulders forward, loosening them up and backwards. Try this on for size. Put your hands out straight in front of you, and I don't want your hands to draw or your elbows to bend, and really try and isolate that shoulder rotation. So down, back, up, and keep those arms straight in front of you, and going backwards the same. Nice. Okay, we're gonna swing our arms, so make sure you have space behind you. Forward. Just wide circles, opening up those shoulders. Backwards, again, check behind you, make sure that you have clearance. And this one's a little tricky. We're gonna do one arm forward, one arm backward. So if you haven't done this, it's easy to start at one position, move one arm forward and the other back, and then they meet at that same position. And then you can just, Openly swing. And same thing going the other direction. So this time the other arm's gonna go forward and meet at that position. Nice. All right, let's loosen up our hips. So we just wanna drive, drawing a wide circle all the way around with our hips. This doubles as a dance move once the clubs reopen. And the other direction. Good. Okay, same thing on the knees. We're gonna put our feet together and we want to draw that circle with our knees. And the other direction. And last but not least, we're gonna rotate an ankle and our wrists. Other way. And other foot. And other direction. Okay, great. So if you feel the need, you can grab another drink of water. We'll get into our first technique. So we're going to start with the jab. It might be familiar to some of you. It's a critical punch in boxing. It's used for both disruption, uh, coming over an opponent's guard, and range finding. And the important parts of the jab are you want it to come straight out and straight back. Human visual systems work great with things moving laterally. They don't work great with that compression. So it's really a surprise if you can make that fist come straight out without dropping it or cocking it back. So again, I'll show you from the side. What we want, our weight's gonna be mostly on our back foot, and that fist is gonna come straight from guard out into our opponent. I'm gonna keep my shoulder up, and that's gonna guard my face from counterattacks coming in. And I'm gonna slightly rotate my fist. I wanna hit with these two knuckles, because they have a direct line to the strong bones in your forearm. So that force will go straight back into that place of strength. If you punch with these two knuckles, they're at an angle. And uh, well, there's what's called the boxer's fracture, that it's really easy to break those with the force that you can generate. So try to aim at those first two knuckles, rotating that shoulder up and coming straight out, straight back. Straight out, straight back. What I don't wanna see is leaning forward with it or circling back so that you can put more power into it. Jab's not a power punch. You're disrupting, you're range finding. Let's try 10 of these. I'll rotate through. So try to mimic if you're confused on any of the form. Again, keeping our weight back. One, two, rotating that shoulder. Three, keeping our weight 80% on that back foot. If you wanna check where your weight is, you should be able to raise your front leg 
fairly easily. If you can't, you lean forward with your punch. So you want to avoid that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So what we're going to do now, if you have a little bit of space, hopefully you can move a little bit with it. We're just going to tie this into some movement. So when you move, again, from your fighting stance, you have your foot on opposite corner, you're square to your opponent. When I move, I'm gonna step with my front foot first, pushing off the ball of my toes, or the ball of my foot, and then the back foot's gonna catch up. I'm never wanting to be caught on my heels, so I step and I catch up. When my back foot catches up, I don't wanna to step too far. You don't want your feet close together, because it's easy to be swept. Let's just try a little bit of movement. Step, catch up. Step, catch up. I'm staying square to my opponent and I'm keeping my gravity centered between my feet. Back, it's the opposite. I'm gonna step my rear foot first, catch up with my front. Step, step. Good. So we're gonna to move to tying the punch in with the movement. So when we do this, I want my jab to extend and land at the exact same time that my foot does. So as my step comes out, my jab does. Step and jab at the same time. Step and jab. Just try that going forward, step and jab. When you get to the front of your area, just walk back as far as you can, and let's do another row. Step, hand and fist connecting at the same time. Good. One more row, there we go. Step and jab. Again, rotating that shoulder up to protect your face, turning your hand over, punching with those first two knuckles. Good. All right. Our second punch is another straight punch. It's usually what we're gonna have to follow the jab. So this is a power punch. This is coming from our rear hand. It's called a cross. And you want to hit them with as much force as possible. Force is mass times acceleration. The mass of your arm isn't really big. So if you're just hitting them with your arm, you're not hitting them with that much force. What you want to do is hit them with the entire mass of your body and just channel that through your fist. So how we accomplish this is we're gonna pick up this rear uh, heel by pivoting. It's really important. As I pivot, it's gonna turn my hips over. It's gonna rotate my trunk, rotate my shoulders, and all this mass is gonna swing forward. And as it does so, I'm gonna connect with the rear hand. So same thing, it's gonna come straight out like the jab, turn over and connect with my opponent. You want to avoid leaning too far forward. Now my gravity's outside of my base, I'm unstable. So you wanna keep your center of gravity right in that middle. If you pivot and drop levels, that's okay, but don't move your center of gravity outside of that center. So it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna pick up that heel, Rotate through, cross, and back to my fighting stance. Again, rotate through, cross. Let's try 10 of those. So I'll rotate through so you can see a few different angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. When you're punching, try and envision a target, an opponent, so that you're always attacking that same spot. You're not just throwing your arms out willy-nilly, but you're actively envisioning where you're attacking. This is gonna build your accuracy and proper punching motor patterns. All right, well, let's just string those two together. So what's that, that's gonna look like is we're gonna have the jab come out, and then we're gonna, through the cross. So one, two. Most basic boxing combo there is. One, two. Again, remember that pivot. It's really important on getting power in your cross. One, two. Let's try 10 of those. One, two. One, two. As soon as the jab is out, you don't want to pause with it out here. You want it back to guard so that you can throw that cross. One, two. 
introduce one more punch and then we're going to do a little bit of cardiovascular training with it. So the last punch is the hook and this is the most often improperly done punch of kind of the basic techniques. So again the problem is most people want to swing their arm but your arm is small. Hitting them with your arm is ineffectual. You want to hit them with your body. So just like the cross where we picked up this back heel, rotated our hips through, with the hook, I'm going to do the opposite. So with my weight on my front foot this time, I'm going to rotate back. It's going to turn my hips over this way. My trunk will follow. My shoulders will follow. And then all of that weight is going to come out in the hook. So to kind of get a sense of this, just put your arm out at a 90 degree angle. You can have your fist down or up. Both are accepted hook forms. So just have the right degree angle and pivot. You're not moving your arm at all. Then change your arms, pivot back, pivot. So we're taking the arm completely out of the equation. When you actually throw a hook, there'll be some slight arm movement, but this is gonna help train that proper motor pattern that's gonna build a powerful hook, more so than if you're sitting throwing these elbowy type arm movements. So let's do a few of those. So again, we're going to load up on the front, so our weight's on our front foot, and then we transfer that weight to the back foot. It's going to look like that. Hook. Our rear hand is always at guard. We never want to drop it. And we don't want to reach too far back when we hook. This is a disadvantageous position for our shoulder. So you can really damage yourself if you connect back here. So what I want to do is only throw it out there in that forward position so that my hand is in front of my shoulder in that strong position. So let's do 10 of these. Remember that pivot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, if you wanna grab a quick drink of water, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a round. And a round in sport combat, fighting's often done in rounds, there are various lengths. Um, Amateur Kickboxing Association in BC recommends two minute rounds. Uh, one minutes are common at the amateur level. I fought a lot at three minutes. Um, so it's an okay way to train. So I'm gonna do a three minute round. And what I want from you guys is to run the combo of all those punches. So jab, cross, hook. If you're less familiar with the punches, always do it in that order. Jab, cross, hook. Jab, cross, hook. And that's what I'll be doing so you can follow along. If you're a little more familiar, you can vary it up. But what we want is we want to go for three minutes solid. Uh, again, you're going to have to find your own pace. So if you find you're getting tired, you're getting a little gassed, what I recommend is throw your punches fast and then just wait. Give yourself a bit of a breather and settle into the next one. Again, keeping proper form, pivoting, keeping that good technique. But you can extend your break time and wait so that you're giving yourself a bit of a breather. If you want to push yourself a little bit harder, go faster, go harder. But I want you to separate your combos into the three or some variation of that and not just complete punching for three minutes. So try to have some break instead of just a complete flurry, have combos of three to four. So I'm going to start the clock here. And when I say go, we'll go for three minutes. It'll be a bit of a workout here. Get that heart going. And uh, yeah, let's start. So three minutes, jab, cross, hook. One, two, three. Remember those pivots, that's really important. I'm moving my weight back and to the other side. Moving my weight right and left. Jab, left, right. That weight's moving across. I'm shifting my hips. I'm turning my shoulders and I'm attacking a target 
that I'm envisioning in front of me. So my punches are landing in the same spot. Remember those pivots, one, two, three. There's a tendency as you go to drop your hands lower and lower, punch from lower and lower, totally exposing your face. You find your hands falling, bring them back up to guard. Everything should return to guard after you throw. One, two, three. Jab, cross, hook. Jab, cross, hook. Jab, cross, hook. Nice work, guys. That's a minute down, keep it up. Jab, cross, hook. If you need a break, reset, keep in your fighting stance, re-engage. Reset, keep in your fighting stance, re-engage. Find your own pace that works for you. Discomfort's okay, pain is not. If you find it painful, give yourself a break, relax off a little bit. If you find you're just in a level of discomfort, that's okay, you can push yourself and really get some of that good growth. Jab, cross, hook. Jab, cross, hook. Nice work, guys. Keep it up. All right, over halfway there. Just over a minute left. Jab, cross, hook. Remember those pivots. Pivot, pivot. Jab, pivot, pivot. Jab, pivot, pivot. Remember not to lean too far forward. Keeping your weight centered. One, two, three. Jack, cross, hook. One minute to go, guys. Almost there. Keep it up. Keep it up. Two, three. Jack, cross, hook. Jack, cross, hook. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Jack, cross, hook. Nice work, guys. Almost there. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. 30 seconds left. Last few punches. Let's go. Jack cross hook, jack cross hook, jack cross hook, jack cross hook, jack cross hook. 15 seconds, let's go guys, last few. Cross hook, jack cross hook, jack cross hook. One, two, three. Nice work guys, keep it up. Five seconds. One, two, three. And that's time. Let's take a quick breather, grab a drink of water. If you find you have a stitch, put your hands behind your head. It's just gonna open up your diaphragm. Take a second to breathe deeply. Let your heart rate return. <sighs> Again, if you need it, let's grab some water. Nice work, guys. So you'll see round training a lot in martial arts. Um, it's just a good way of engaging in high intensity interval training and it mimics how sport fighting is done. Uh, so it's a great way to build your cardio to that level. Of course, a lot of guys then they'll do uh, multiple three minute rounds or maybe do rounds longer than they would fight at so that they're training beyond, uh, beyond what they would need to do. Knowing that when you're in a tournament setting those nerves and Having a fully resisting opponent always take a little bit, a little bit of your cardio out of you right from the get-go. Okay. All right. So those are our basic punches. Um, that's all we're gonna do for hands today. Beyond that, there's also the uppercut that in two weeks' time I'll introduce as well. But between those four punches, that's basically 80% of what you're gonna throw. And you just learn to throw it from different angles and attacking different parts of the body. So practicing those basics again and again and again is what makes a person a good boxer. All right, but this isn't just boxing, this is kickboxing. So let's get into some kicks. I'm gonna start with the uh, harder kick first. It's not harder per se, absolutely but it's a less familiar motor pattern for most people. Um, and this comes from my background as uh, a Sancho fighter. The side kick is used a lot in Chinese kickboxing. Um, you don't see it as much in Muay Thai, albeit it's kind of starting to be incorporated. Muay Thai guys usually do the front teeth. But what we're gonna do is find a bit of a wall if you can, or something that you can balance yourself against. Because the side kick is going to be 
this motion here. So it's going to be a linear straight kick. If you can find some place to balance, you can put your hand on it, have your toes facing that wall, and then you can raise your foot and just move through the, that motion. Now, I don't want to see kind of these flicking motions. This isn't a flicking kick. It's more of a stomp. If you think of stomping straight down, you can then just raise that angle, stomping a little bit to the side. And just raise it to where you're comfortable. So if being right up here is not comfortable, stomp down here. But if you can go a little higher, stomp more to the side, a little higher yet. So, so we're gonna do 25 of those. Try when you're going through this to keep the bottom of your foot facing your opponent. So you're gonna ratchet that knee to your far shoulder and then kick straight out. And try to keep that leg up coming straight back, straight out through all 25. If you need to drop your leg, that's okay. For most people, this is an unfamiliar movement, so your glutes are gonna to start to burn. Just rejoin us when you can, and finish the 25 at your own pace. So let's give that a go. One, two, three. Different angles so you can see. It's a linear piston driving straight into your opponent. So you'll feel it in your back, especially if you're tight in the hips and the extensors, you'll definitely feel it in your glutes. So try, again, you can use that wall for balance. You don't need to do it up in the air. Drive straight back, straight out, straight back, straight out. Really work that piston, that linear attack. So I'll give you guys a few minutes for anyone still working those, just to continue and finish those off. If you're done, you can grab a drink of water. But what we're gonna do then, is just balance ourselves out. So have the other hand resting on the wall, point your toes, and same thing, 25 kicks. If it feels uncomfortable right now, that's okay. As you develop the proper motor pattern, you know, you'll, you'll get better and better at it. But at the start, it'll feel awkward and it'll feel ineffectual. That's all right. I just ask that you try and go through the motion because surprisingly quickly, you'll be able to develop power through this technique. All right. Well, again, if anyone's still doing their 25, I'll let you finish those off. Um, anyone else, grab a drink of water. So if there's any of you that are more familiar with that kick and want a little bit more, when you do those, just do them without the wall. Develop that balance through that, that motion without holding on to anything. Okay. So there's the hard kick. Great, we got that out of the way. Now we're gonna go into the most characteristic kick from Muay Thai. And the kick that honestly most people think about when they think of kicking, which is the roundhouse. So the roundhouse is gonna look something like this. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break that down into seven steps. And it's gonna work our balance a bit because I ask that you try and hold each step until I tell you to move to the next one. If you need to put your leg down, that's okay. Again, rejoin us when you can. But we're gonna break this into steps so that we have the complete motion. So step one is just a pivot. We're gonna move this foot over. Again, as the kick happens in real time, 
some of these are gonna be happening very close to one another. But as we break it down, first step is the pivot. Step two, I'm gonna raise my knee. Step three, I'm gonna rotate over. So what I want is I want my hips to turn over. I don't wanna kick like this, where my hips are still square and my motion's coming up. I wanna turn that pelvis over so that I'm leading with this and my quad is facing my opponent. That's really gonna open up your power. So one, two, three, turn that over. Four, we're gonna extend our shin. Where we're kicking is gonna be with this section of our shin. It's like a baseball bat, it's hard. As you get more used to kicking, you can slide this down to your instep, um, especially if you're doing head kicks, uh, things that might not be checked against an opponent's shin. But you don't want to start there because you can kind of, there's a lot of small bones in your foot. I've buggered mine up for sure in the tournament, uh, kicking a guy's shin. If you're kicking, aiming with that shin to start, you're aiming with that baseball bat. As you get more adept, you can shift it down some. But for now, let's stay high. So again, one is the pivot. Two, we're raising our knee. Three, we're rotating over. Four, extend the kick. Five, it's just the reverse. We're going to bring that back. Six, turn our hip back down. And seven, return to our fighting stance. Now, as for our hands, if you keep them at guard, that's okay. If you want a traditional kind of Muay Thai kick, you're going to counter rotate, which throws this arm down. Uh, and that's okay too. I don't mind that. Especially if you're kicking body or high, your head is leaned back enough that you don't really need to worry about getting clocked there. The other um, alternative that I uh, propose is rotating high. So this is what I do, and it's just keeping your hand up in your opponent's face, maybe dragging their card up, their guard up as they see that movement, and following the kick underneath. So one of those three is fine, either keeping your guard here, counter-rotating, or counter-rotating high, keeping that in their face. Okay. So we're going to go through these steps. We're going to go through slow. I'll move through them with you. So if you forget where we're at, just look at me. And we'll work on that balance and developing that motor pattern. So one is a pivot. Two, we're going to raise that knee. Three, really important part, turn that hip over. Four, extend that kick. Five, retract. Six, and seven, back to our fighting sense. Good, again, one, pivot. Two, knee up. Three, turn that hip over. Four, extend the leg. Five, six, and seven, back to our fighting stance. Good, again, one is a pivot. Two, knee up. Three, rotate that hip over. Four, extend that leg. Five, retract. Six, back to our knee up. And seven, back to our fighting stance. Nice work, guys. One more. Here we go. Keep it up. One is a pivot. Two, knee up. Three, turn that hip over. Four, extend that leg. Remember, your guard is either counter-rotated or in their face. Five, bring that knee back. Six, and seven, back to our fighting stance. Last one, guys, nice work. I know these are tough. One is the pivot. Two, knee up. Three, turn that hip over. Four, extend your kick. Five, retract. Six, and seven. Nice work, guys. Get you to grab a drink of water if you need one. And then what we're gonna do, as we do so often, is we're just gonna bounce things out. So going the other side, the only difference, everything's gonna be the same, but to get my stance shifted to where this kick has more power, instead of just a pivot on this back foot, I'm gonna step. 
So I'm gonna step at an angle, 45 degree angle, still have some width between my stance. You'll see that my foot's now aiming out as if I was pivoting. So you can imagine if you change your stance, your pivot would be here. So you want your feet to be in that kind of orientation. Stepping out, I'm already pivoted. So let's give that a try. So doing the, the left kick, one, step and pivot, two, knee up, three, rotate that hip over, four, extend the foot, five, retract, six, and seven, back to guard. So again, stepping one, knee up, two, rotate that hip over, so leading with that pelvis, having a straight flat line. You don't want cocked with your butt back, you want your butt forward and your pelvis really leading that movement. Five, extend the kick, there's four, sorry. Five, retract. Six, and seven, back to our fighting stance. Good, we got three more, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more, one, two, three, rotate that hip over, four, five, six, seven. All right, last one, guys. One, step and pivot. Two, knee up. Working that balance. Three, turn that hip over. Working that control. Balance in our positions. Four, extend the kick. You got this. If you need to put your leg down, that's okay. Rejoin when you can. Five, retract that kick. Six. And seven. All right, nice work, guys. Take a quick breather, grab a drink of water. We're almost done. So that's it for technique. Today, just as a bit of an overview, we went through some basic movement in our fighting stance. We did three punches, the jab, the cross, and the hook. Um, we did two kicks, the linear side kick, it's coming in that straight piston, and our roundhouse kick, that's coming, chopping in from the side, you can attack low, middle, or high. Um, basically, every class you have with me, we'll probably review these things. As I said, because we have a four-class series, we'll try and build on this and work some more as we go. But for the last remaining few minutes, we're just going to do a little bit of conditioning, um, cardiovascular and muscular. Uh, again, Find your own level. Um, discomfort is okay. Pain is not. If you find any sort of tunneling to your vision or you're losing your peripheries, definitely slow down. Um, lots of us has been there before. We're working out too hard to the point where we're almost passing out. Of course, you don't want to do that. So if you find anything that way, if you're having trouble catching your breath, slow down, take a minute. It's perfectly fine. Um, what we're going to be doing is just a series of burpees, squats, and sit-ups. So for the squat, if you're uncomfortable with a press, you can just get to the plank position. So you'll be jumping down to a plank and back up. If you are comfortable through the upper body for a press, when you're down here, do a push up before you jump. So we're gonna do 10 of those. Squats, I just want you to have your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. And then you're just gonna rest, you're gonna sink down, your knees tracking over your feet, and your hips can drop right in between. Then we're gonna keep our chest up as we raise, and down. For the sit-ups, we'll just be on our back, and go down, you can have your hands behind your head if you want, you can have them across their chest, whichever's best for you. And that's just the sit-up, up and down. So what we're gonna do is kind of a reverse pyramid. We're gonna start with 10, and then we're gonna half it each time, but I don't believe in half reps. So if we're ever going 10 to five to 2.5, well, there's no 2.5, we'll do three. Uh, three and a half is 1.5, no point fives, we'll do two. And we're gonna go until we're, we're, we're out of the pyramid here. So let's give this a go. So 10 
burpees. Come on. Careful with your roofs. I know some basement suites don't have a ton of clearance. So just work within your space. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so then I'll just give a second. If you're still going through the burpees, that's okay. Just follow along as best you can. We're gonna go into the squats. So again, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nice work, guys. And the sit-ups. So on our back, we're gonna do 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're gonna half it. So five. Give me everyone just a second to catch up. So five burpees. Again, careful with your space. Two, three, four, and five. Moving into the squat. Again, a little greater than shoulder width. One, two, Three, four, five, and on our backs for the setup. One, two, three, four, five. Nice work, guys. We're gonna half it again. Rounding up, and that's three. So three burpees. One. Two, three, nice work. Moving into the squat. One, two, three. Okay, again, if you fall behind, no sweat. Just catch up as best you can. One, two, three. We're gonna half it again. Rounding up, that's two. So two burpees. One, two. Working into the squat. One, two. On our backs, the sit-ups. One, two. Almost out of the pyramid, half one more time. That's one. One burpee. One squat, and one sit up. All right, nice work guys, how to be. So you put in some great work today. Um, to end up the class, we're just gonna do a little bit of wrist stretching and mobility. When you're shadow boxing like we are, you're not putting too much strain on your wrist, but boxing and punching puts a lot of force on a really delicate piece of skeletal machinery. So we wanna make sure that we're building that up in a way that it can take that force. So to start, just have your hands flat on the ground like a push-up. Um, the further back you move your knees, the more force is gonna be on your wrists. So taking your knees completely off the ground is gonna be the most force. Find what's comfortable for you. If you need to be close up, that's okay. We're just gonna rock back and forth, putting as much pressure as is comfortable on that wrist. And it's a nice opportunity to collect our breath. We can turn our hands sideways. Oftentimes people need to move up 
for this one. It's a little bit less stable. Rocking side to side. Hmm. Okay. Point your wrist backwards. Again, with your elbows straight, this often is a little bit less stable. So if you need to move your knees up, that's okay. And then we're gonna rotate all the way around have our hands facing us again. And there we go. So Chris is gonna turn on the group chat. So what you're able to do now is um, post some questions, uh, feedback, anything of that sort. And what we can get to today, we'll get to. And what we can't, at least I'll have that information. And next class, I can, I can broach the question uh, and go over maybe the confusion that was there or try and uh, get through anything that might have been missing. So if you want, you can, you can uh, post some questions. For those of you that still want to do some wrists, we're just going to flip our hands upside down and the same thing. Now, I know in uh, the time of COVID, getting exercise in is uh, difficult. So for a lot of people, this is going to be more activity than we've had in a single sitting for a while. Um, so to alleviate the soreness that might come, drink plenty of water, uh, perhaps stretch before bed, stretch out your shoulders, your hips, uh, your hamstrings, and uh, just try to be kind to your body as it recovers in these uh, trying times. Okay, well, I think that's all we have for today. So we'll stick around for a bit, the chat's open. And uh, I'll take a look at, at the questions that come up and see if I can answer what I can. Thanks so much, Justin. That's amazing class. And uh, everybody stuck around for the conditioning, which was great. Um, wow. Just a quick note to everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We have uh, classes going on every day. So feel free to check the website for upcoming classes. And are you able to see the chat, Justin? Yep. Awesome. So I'll give everybody a few minutes just to interact. Yeah, and, and a reminder again, just uh, the plug. I mean, SRC's got tons of stuff, so always check out the site, um, see what interests you. It's great to try stuff. For martial arts, I know next week, uh, as I mentioned at the start of class, Gosha, he's another instructor, awesome martial artist, um, big Muay Thai background. Again, probably a lot of similar type strikes, but with a different teaching style. So check that out, see what resonates with you. Um, and then I'll be back in, in two weeks time.